we're back with your boy Lavernius Coles and Wayne Quebec. And you know I'm excited to get with you on the breakdown of the Jet versus the Minnesota Vikings. Because we had a discussion about this a little while ago. And I'm excited to hear what my man Wayne has to say about this loss they just took. Yeah. And, and your first comment was Mike White. Yeah. <laughs> he did a good job, man. I know you're going to bash him. But, I man, he made some big throws. Obviously, he had to pick. Pick at the end. That was going to happen. He had to force it. But, uh, you know, I didn't get a chance to watch the whole game. I did. Just yeah, I know you did, but something that stands out is just that third and ten, how he got crushed. Uh, and on the radio, they're like, oh, he's out of the game. And then a fourth and ten, he throws a seed right to Corey Davis for first that whatever it was. Um, and Garrett Wilson coming out after the game saying, I'll go to war with Mike White. It's just the feeling that people have uh, about him, you know. And, and the first thing I want to talk about was him. How do you not see that he should be the quarterback the rest of the year instead of Zach Wilson? Well, again, it goes back to me. I'm I'm one of those people that if we're going to not allow our second pick of the draft two years ago to be the quarterback of this organization, then you have to start questioning the people in the front office that you've given praise to. I mean, the process that they go through with this isn't the right process because, again, we all talk about his leadership skills and accountability where if he didn't have those skills again, at the college level where he wasn't a leader, what makes you think he's going to walk into a locker room and be accountable and be a leader amongst men? Because that's what you're dealing with at the professional level. So I don't see how you give up on him so fast because that's a huge one investment draft wise, draft capital wise and money wise. So for me, Mike White played yeah, a okay game. It wasn't impressive to me. I mean, they had five drives that ended up with five field goals. Right. And the first, in the first one and three quarters of a quarter, they had two first downs. Yeah. So I don't I'm, look, think... I'm looking at the game from an objective eye. I mean, okay, he ended up with a lot of yards, but you ended up with a lot of yards because, one, you were behind. Yeah. Our defense gave up a couple touchdowns and rushing, which they usually don't do. So everybody felt like, well, if we got behind, he could bring us back, and it doesn't feel like if they score, we got to that threshold again of that 17 points that I was talking about. So for me, I'm going to tell you, the offense got a D- minus for me. A B or D? D. D is in dog, just okay. so you know. Yeah. And and, and again, you, you're going to differ from what I'm saying, but I, I, I paid attention to, to everything. I mean, just uh, tell me something different. He attempted 57 passes in the football game. Sounded a little much. Joe Flasco-esque to me. Flasco? <laughs> Flasco-esque, you know? <laughs> hey, listen, I gave him a C-plus a little bit higher. If we played the game from the 20 to the 20, we dominate. But when mm. we get inside the 20 – we can go to play calling, you know, and what they could do with that. Um, so I think that hurts uh, the offense offense a lot. But um, like I said, when we get inside the 20s, inside the five, I'm thinking we could just pound it in four times, do something, you know, not low percentage throws. So it's part the play calling, uh, part them, but they need to execute when um, giving the plays. I know there was a bad drop by Burials. Um, sounded bad on the radio, but then when I saw it, I was like, yeah, he that's something he's got to pull in. But a play here or there, we win that game. That's what's so frustrating. Yeah, yeah play here or there for them. The game ain't even as close because you got to look yeah. at it from that perspective. He threw two other potential picks earlier yeah. in the game that they just dropped, flat out dropped. Right. So like, they didn't capitalize on his mistakes, but had they caught those other ones I'm talking about, you're talking about a four-pick game again. Yeah, I don't know. They they didn't make those plays though. No, so but, but, uh, hey, but, but but they're there. This yeah. is there. That's all I'm telling you. But well, you want to get behind something? Hell, that's the case with my would keep right, our number well, two overall yeah. pick in there, and then let him throw four picks. If 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 my aunt had nuts, she'd be my uncle. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. If was a fifth, I'd be drunk too. <laughs> but hey, we're gonna get to that point. So we gave him a D minus. We're gonna move on to the defense then. Of course. Defense didn't play as well because I told you they have to keep opponents at that threshold of 17 points and under. They didn't do that. And I hold them to a higher standard than I hold the offense. So they gave up, again, I said two rushing touchdowns early in the game, which is very uncharacteristic of our defense because they're very stingy when it comes to the run game. You may throw it in, but you're not just running the ball in the end zone on us. And and, and that I, I didn't like that for our defense. But they did buckle down as the game went on and start making some plays and getting off the field with three and outs. And so my grade for them was a C plus. Okay. Yeah. Um, the thing was, I was a little shocked 
Um, yeah, like they had the Madison had one, Dalvin had a, the Russian touchdown. It, like I said, in the first half, you know, there's some plays that, you know, you wouldn't expect, but they made the, you know, the changes at halftime. And it's crazy. Like, you know, offense goes down, you know, they get the QB sneak, but then the offense can't do it. Defense stops them three and out. Offense misses again. Defense stops them three and out. So I gave him a little higher. I gave him a B minus. And I just think that with that defense, man, we're going to be in every game. I know we're going to go through the schedule and what we what we can win, what we can't. But uh, I gave him a higher grade. I just think they made the plays to give us a chance to win. We just didn't execute. <laughs> they gave me, they, they ain't make enough. Teams. Let me do special teams. First first time all year, I give him an A. Okay, good job. I gave him an A also. So Listen, yeah, there you five, go. But five, five, five field, goals. field goals. Five and field goals. Yeah, Greg the leg, Jets record, 60, 60 yard, yard field goal. I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. But yeah. we lost. We still yeah. lost. Well, they still get an A for for effort. Okay. Coaching. But, yeah. Coaching. I gave him a B. I gave him a B. Because special teams got A, so you did, you, you've did. improved special teams-wise. Right. Our defense went down because they gave up too much. I mean, I, I, our defense just has to be a lot better for us to win football games with the way the offense is performing. Because I don't see you beating this team we got coming up this week. Right. We'll get into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But go ahead on. I'm going to let you talk about it before we ease on into that. Because you're already 0 for 1, you and old Barty Bart. <laughs> You it's not happy to be right that our team lost. I'm not happy to be right, but <laughs> because I call a spade a spade, right. don't make me the bad guy. All right. Truth hurts. You ever heard that before? <laughs> I'm just saying, truth hurts. Like I said before, hey, this is the holidays, man. I got my snowman. Must be happy. Listen, listen, I, listen, before we get into anything, I want to say this. I was thinking about this. Obviously, there's no moral victories. Uh, we lost. I understand that. Um, but I can't believe at this point, this is kind of not a knock on the fans and on the coast, whatever it is. We are seven and five. We control our own destiny as far as we win. We're not scoreboard watching. Um, I understand what people have seen the last bunch of years, but this ain't it. Uh, I'm sick of people with the, this is the same old Jets. Uh, this we're playing meaningful football in December. Uh, like I said, this this is different. The, I had someone say to me, do you think we should tank the rest of the season and get a high draft pick? I'm like, what are you talking about? We're seven and five. I understand we have a tough schedule, but people need to stop. We are seven and five at this point. And, and I, mean, I, hate, I hate to agree with you. I mean, yes, you're playing meaningful football. Every week counts. And I know I'm kind of the, the Grinch around this time because I yeah. call it, it it is what it is because we actually supposed to have a better record than what it states if we had beaten the teams we were supposed to beat. So right. for me, the reason I'm so hard on these guys is because I know they are a lot better than what they display on a regular basis. They have right. the potential to be great. And with potential, which is what our second overall pick has, it doesn't always come to fruition. Right. So we have to get these guys and not only pat them on the back, when they're doing well, but when they're actually doing well, point out the things that's going to get them beat. Because we used to have to go through that. We'd be like, man, but we won. And coach would be like, no, but this is the things that you're going to lose, going to cause you to lose in the future. And we're not getting it done. And those are the same things that are glaring back and, and rearing his head, that bad snake that are kicking us in the behind as we get to the back stretch of the schedule, which is the meat and potatoes, which is going to decide whether you're going to be playing after the season is over. Yeah. When we played, it felt a little different how we approached it, um, the wins and the losses. But I always say this to people, potential is the worst word. I mean, you see guys that have potential coming out of college, potential because they're number two pick. You know what, they keep getting chances and, and they don't succeed or whether it's still potential. Um, I'm not saying we give up on <coughs> Zach. We're not going to give up by Zach in any means. You know, they invested a high pick in him. He's got the tools. You know, right now he's not ready. I think Mike White can do – unless Mike White does something terrible or gets hurt, he's not going to lose the job. Uh, maybe Zach comes back next year different. But, yeah, like I said, we, we were treated different. They need um, to bring Zach back yeah, next Buffalo. week. Yeah. After yeah. Buffalo. Zach right, needs to come back after Buffalo. Don't, don't throw him in that monster. Let, and what? Let, let Mike White go out there and deal with this animal up in Buffalo so y'all can really get to see – 
what what it's like. He got a taste of a pretty decent defense this weekend because I told you the Bears was not it. They weren't right. a good team to, to to be your measuring stick. You got a chance to see they was able to put up 22 points, which is cool. I get it. We're excited about the 22. Everybody's happy. Oh, my gosh, we scored a lot of points. Yeah. Not enough. You're going into Buffalo. We're going to have to deal with the elements. You got a monster. I've said what I've had to say. The team you just lost to is not as good as the team you're about to play. Yeah. They had 10 wins, though. You understand? Minnesota has 10 wins no matter how they do it. But it, anybody but, can be beat on, on any day. You know how I know that? You know how I know Buffalo can beat? Because we beat them already. Mm. I don't care if it was home or what happened. Mm. We have that confidence going in there at, mm. coming off a win against them. Oh. And this is, you know, I love we lost this week to Minnesota. I understand. But this is an AFC East game. You win this, it counts as two. And they get the tiebreaker on them. So, listen, it's tough. I'm going to turn my hat to the back on this one. Listen. I'm going to ask I, you a question. Go ahead. Do you think they're gonna go in Buffalo and win? I think they can win. That ain't what I asked. You, you, you didn't. You, you said yes. No. I think they could win. I absolutely think they could win. Yeah. They have to play a perfect game, uh, and they need to execute the plays, um, crucial points of the game. Obviously, defense has their hands full. Uh, what do you think about the argument between DJ Reed and Justin Jefferson? What Just do you mean the argument? DJ Reed said he shut him down, and Justin Jefferson said they had help over the top. Did they do a good job on Justin Jefferson? I mean, you're supposed to. The guy's leading the league. You're supposed to double him, get help. Yeah. You better, you better get help. Yeah. I mean, the kid I thought is, they did good. I thought yeah. they good. Yeah, you did, now yeah, you you got did a good job. But uh, but the, the game plan is a game plan. If you if yeah. you are the man, they're going to take you away. It's just what happened. That's yeah. why I was so open when I played with you. You was in the middle. Everybody knew Wayne was getting the ball. So ain't nobody know about this little young third round rookie outside. So of course I'm open some of the time. It's gonna happen. So other guys was able to get involved, and they was able to make plays. They had some other guys step up. The running game was able to step up for Minnesota, and they had some other guys make some crucial catches to make some plays. It happens. Yeah, Osborne and Hawkinson and those guys. That's the thing people don't understand. When me and Lavernis played together, when me and you played together. You know, we were decoys for each other sometimes. Like, we knew we weren't getting the ball, but we had to run the route as hard as possible uh, to get the eyes off each other. Uh, and, and obviously, when we played together and with Santana, I don't know. I don't think, you know, it's ever been like that since us. Maybe this is the closest with Corey and Elijah. And man, it ain't really close. Cause don't, don't, ever, don't ever downplay us like that, man. No, I said maybe this is close, but this not. We, we were we were a different different. Different cat, man. We were a problem. <laughs> we were a problem for uh And we were some little guys. That's what was great. <laughs> yeah, Part of that, you know, I wanted to call out, like, good performances. Corey Davis made some plays. Uh, Bam Knight, this young kid, uh, had some, uh, you know, 50-yard run. You don't see that much. Uh, he plays solid. Kid. Corey, Wilson, Corey, Corey, Corey had a deflection earlier, which caused the interception also, just so you know. I didn't see it. Well, I did. I didn't see it. So, yeah, oh. I, I, I point out every little thing, and that's the thing. So yeah. that first that first field goal, uh, their first points in the game came off of a pass he threw, off of his I think it hit off his shoulder pads or something right. like that, or his hands, and it popped up in the air and ended up getting their first interception of the game off of that. You know what? <laughs> Something about him is he doesn't make the routine play, but he makes the hard play and the hard catches like he did on that fourth and ten. But this Garrett Wilson kid's legit. I know he had like fifteen targets, but um. You know, sad to say he's gonna break my catch record, <laughs> but it stood for 27 years, man. That ain't that ain't bad. But he's he's the future. We you know we like him lock up and out of the draft. Uh, do you think there was any uh, big defensive performances out there that stand out? I mean, the defense as a whole played well. I mean, I was I was questioning a few things in the beginning because they didn't look like themselves early on in the game, and that was one of the things I was telling you guys earlier. Teams are going to – they're starting to get film on these guys. A lot of them are young. Yeah. So after watching for a while, teams are able to come out and game plan to figure out ways to get around, get on the edge, and figure out where there's some holes in this defense at. And they're going to make some plays against them. Everybody's not just going to come out and say, well, they're a great defense. We can't beat them and just, just, just hope. No. Some people are going to game some solid game plans and give this defense some problems and are able to put points on the board and get above that 17 number. And that is where our issues will come in. But, I mean, 
I mean, they, they're going to be great. They, ha they have so much talent on that side of the ball. They have a lot of money and high draft picks invested on that side of the ball. So I wouldn't expect anything different. So they're, go they're going to be a great, great unit, but they got to be better. You know, I was talking to uh, Rush, the producer, before the show. I said, did you see the comments of the show we did with Bart last week? I did. <laughs> the uh, Here's one. Wow, Coles comes off hard as a glass half empty type of guy. Didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> one said, uh, Jesus, Coles is one disgruntled dude. Emoji, LOL. <laughs> and then here's one. I agree with Jess Legend and Laverne's Cole. Mike White hasn't proven crap. <laughs> <laughs> one said, if Jesus Christ came down on the foot to play for the Jets, you wouldn't be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's with Laverne's Coles? He always missed their doubting Thomas. Uh, does anyone know who his favorite team growing up was? Who's your favorite team growing up? Who was my Dallas Cowboys. Uh, really? Yeah. All right. I like too oh. tall. That was the first jacket I got as a kid. It had the little star on it. And so I just kind of fell in love with them. You had too tall Jones. I, I like those nicknames they had back in the day. So I just kind of like them. Randy White and all right, Cole's is Mr. Quote unquote Optimist, laughing my ass off. Um, <laughs> here's one I'm with LC. Let's see what happens two weeks. Uh, here's one Cole's is a hater. Uh, anyone with eyes can see the difference between two quarterbacks, dude. They got they're all after you. I love it. Tell, them, tell, them, tell them, comment now. The game is over. Comment now. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh the best one was, I wish Bart and Lavernius would have given Wayne the chance to talk. <laughs> <laughs> when they asked, they say, hey, you mind if Bart's going to come on with, uh, with with you guys? I was <laughs> like, I said, I'm not going to get a word in. It, and the funniest thing is, it was a 15-minute interview. And like in the 11-minute mark, you're like, wait, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just listening to you guys. <laughs> you should change the show to the Bart Nelson show. Um, uh, you know, co-starring. <laughs> I wasn't a star anymore. Guess, guess on his own show. That's what it should yeah, be. Yeah, I was but, guest on my own show. But, uh, but uh, listen, you know, I value your opinion. I know you have a good heart. I know you're, you know, Jet fan for life and you're a great Jet player. But uh, yeah, what you say is the truth. It matters this week. You know, we, we're, we're game by game. So hopefully, you know, the defense shows up like another can and the offense will put some points on board. Like I said, I agree with you. Um, but we got another week, and hopefully we come back next uh, next week uh, praising Mike White and the defense and the coaches. and Mike White. <laughs> 57 passes, zero touchdown passes. Well, We'll see. Don't you know? Mm. You know, don't pile mm. on. Don't pile on me for being a fan. Hey, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm just I'm just pointing out the obvious. The, they say the numbers don't lie. Flasco esque, a Flacco esque. Listen, <laughs> if the Jets win, you have to do like a self made shirt. If you can't get a Mike White jersey in time, Mike F and White. I want I want to see him in the podcast. Right? It's on. I would do if if they go into Buffalo and win. Yeah, I owe you ten push-ups and a Mike effing white shirt. All right, got you, buddy. All right, love you, man. See you. Love next you week. too. See you later.